In this video we're going to talk about the interaction between uh, rotations and vibrations for a diatomic molecule. So we've seen a model of the vibrations of a diatomic molecule, the harmonic oscillator, and we've seen these energy levels, just Planck's constant times some vibrational frequency times n plus one half, a quantum number n. And we've seen a model for the, vi for the rotations of it, the rigid rotor, which gave us the energy levels E of j, some quantum number, some integer j, equals to some rotational constant for the specific molecule times j times j plus 1. So we're going to look at a type of spectroscopy where we can measure changes in both the vibrational and the rotational energy levels. So we need to develop uh, the tools to describe the energy levels of both of these simultaneously. So it should come at not a great surprise that the energy of the rot rotation and vibration simultaneously is just most simply a sum of these two energies, h nu n plus one half, the vibrational part times bj times j plus one, the rotational part. <coughs> But then we want to also convert these into wave numbers because, as we know, spectroscopists love wave numbers. So to do that, we just put every, we divide everything by the speed of light and put it in the units of inverse centimeters, and that gives us this omega bar, which we talked about for the harmonic oscillator, times n plus one half. Plus instead of b, we have b bar j times j plus 1. Okay, and just to remind ourselves, <clears throat> this n starts from 0 and goes up from there. And similarly, our value of j starts from 0 and goes up from there. And this value of omega, which we have, or omega bar, is just going to be 1 over 2 pi times the speed of light times the square root of the spring constant k over mu, the spring constant determining how stiff the potential is that acts on the displacement from equilibrium of that bond, mu being the reduced mass, and b bar being equal to Planck's constant over 8 pi squared times speed of light c times i. And just to go all out on this, let's further remind ourselves that the reduced mass mu is equal to m1 times m2 over m1 plus m2, being the masses of each of the individual atoms. And our our moment of inertia here, I from the rotational part equals mu L squared. So if I give you the value of K, this, the force constant for a specific bond, and tell you which two atoms are participating in it and what the equilibrium bond length is, you should be able to calculate what the energy levels are for a given value of um, the vibrational quantum number n and rotational quantum number j. You should be able to tell me what that energy is relative to the zero of energy as it's defined for these cases. And if we plot these energy levels kind of so we can see them simultaneously, let's make some plot here, or we just have energy which is going up and just kind of have these in units of omega bar, then our potential uh, is going to be one half kx squared because we have no potential for rotation. Rotation has zero potential energy and it's Hamiltonian. So let's just make a parabola there, have it go up, and then have this be one omega bar, two omega bar, three omega bar, etc. So in terms of the vibrational levels, we've got n equals zero sitting down here at one half. If you plug in n equals zero, you get one half omega bar. 
The next one, plug in n equals 1, you will get 3 halves omega bar for the n equals 1 state. 5 halves for n equals 2. And by that same logic, 7 halves for n equals 3. So all these values are n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, as we've discussed before. But the new part that we're putting on top of that is a rotational energy as well. And B bar is usually much, much smaller than omega bar, because omega bar puts these transitions in the infrared region, whereas transitions between the rotational levels are in the microwave region, much smaller units of energy. So we'll have things like J equals 0, 1, 2, 3. And I don't know how many in general there are usually between a given rotational level, but probably uh, probably on the order of tens, I just am drawing this for a scale which is convenient for us to see it, and hopefully the resolution of your screen is high enough to where you can actually see what's going on here. But the, the vibrational energy levels, as we saw, are linearly spaced apart, evenly spaced, but the rotational levels are going to be uh, quadratically spaced from each other. So if we look at the value of j, what does j equal? We would have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. and spacing themselves further out from each other. So in the next video we're going to look at what the differences in these energy levels are and what the selection rules for rho vibrational spectroscopy are and then what kind of spectrum results.